would a week be without yet another 11th hour in the interminable fight to keep Greece from exiting the Euro? On July 13, a deal was struck that averted the likely withdrawal of ECB emergency liquidity assistance and consequent departure of the Hellenic Republic from the currency union. By my count, 11th hour number 47,496 since the Greek Parliament passed its first austerity package on February 9, 2010. So are we finally on the path towards permanent reconciliation? Or is this just another in a line of utterly predictable summer sequels? Well, to be sure, Cyprus's mistake was in overplaying his hand, assuming that the referendum would give him a mandate to negotiate and believing that Europe needs Greece as much as Greece needs Europe. Once he realized he was wrong, for example, Brexit is much more of an existential threat to Europe, European integration, than Grexit, he was forced to climb down. It became clear that a return to the drachma would require extremely painful adjustments, likely hitting Syriza's political base the hardest. For Europe, the avenues of financial contagion are much less pronounced than, than they were four years ago. Banks have restructured their exposures. Europe is currently benefiting from renewed economic activity. And the ECB has a number of policy tools at its disposal, including QE, outright monetary transactions, and the European Stability Mechanism. Meanwhile, continued concessions would only open the door to moral hazard in dealing with the grievances of other peripheral country governments. Now, that's not to say that the rest of Europe has nothing to lose in a Grexit scenario. A Greek exit, orderly or not, would embolden populist elements in countries like France, Spain, Italy, the Netherlands, and even bolster the case of Eurosceptics in the UK, rekindling the Scotland debate. And then there's the little issue, the little issue of Russia. Given the current state of European-Russian relations, no one in Europe wants to see a failed state at the edge of the continent. Finally, exporters in countries like Germany have benefited from the drag exacted on the euro by the bloc's weaker members. In fact, one can argue that if the German economy has improved, it's largely the result of the common currency. So both sides wanted resolution, or perhaps it may be more correct to say that neither side was prepared to manage the alternative. However, the compromise appears to be little more than another kicking of the can fraught with implementation risk. The leftist coalition in Athens will have to impose conditions already rejected by a populace that has endured four years of austerity. For their part, European leaders have had to use considerable political capital to sell the agreement to highly skeptical electorates ahead of a busy electoral calendar in the next few years. This raises the likelihood that parties will be back at the negotiating table before the end of a third program. There's also the issue of another write-down, which the IMF insists is necessary to putting Greece on a sustainable path. Even if we make it through the next three years, and Greece then regains access to capital markets, big ifs, the more fundamental questions remain. At its root, the Greek crisis has highlighted the structural weakness of the Euro project. When a country joins a currency union, it assumes insolvency risk. That is, it takes on debt without the ability to print currency. It's what differentiates an Italy from, say, a Japan. This demands fiscal discipline and requires supervision and enforcement, a key condition of the Northern Bloc. It also necessitates debt mutualization rather than national borrowing that can push a member state to bankruptcy, as championed by the Southern Bloc. Therefore, in the absence of a new approach that deals with these fundamental issues, any solution can only be viewed as temporary in nature, whether the defender is Greece, Spain, Italy, or even Germany. The bottom line, on July 13th, markets exhaled. However, under the current Greek coalition, the agreement can best be viewed as a placeholder. Meanwhile, the longer term sustainability of the euro requires a fundamentally different approach. Unfortunately, this demands the sort of solidarity 
that has been absent in recent months. Yet another test for European integration. Until next time, I'm Stuart Bergman.